Welcome to the polls. This is Wise County School's first ever superintendent's podcast. Uh, we've decided to do a podcast. We're going to try to interview uh, one student from, from every school across the county. Um, these students have been nominated by their principal to come join me in my office. And the idea behind the Pulse is we want to know what's going on in our schools. We want to get to know our kids. And we want everyone out in uh, the world to know about all the amazing students that we have in our school. So um, we hope to do this at least once a month. Um, we hope to have some great interviews with some of our students. And we are fortunate today to start with a young man named Caleb. Caleb is a senior for us uh, here in Wise County and me and Caleb are going to sit down. We're going to talk. I've told him to kind of be relaxed and you know we'll get to know each other a little bit and uh, we hope to have a little bit of fun but this is about the students. Um, Caleb, tell me a little bit about yourself. I know you're a senior. I, I, I know a few things about you but not everybody else knows about you so just tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, pretty much. Uh, I am kind of that uh, distance running junkie. Uh, and it's funny because I've not found that passion until sophomore year. Um, I, I said at the end of my freshman year I was going to run cross country, and then I thought about backing out of it because I just didn't think that distance would be my thing. But my parents motivated me, and um, I had a really great first year of it. Uh, I was one place away from making it to state and then that convinced me to run next year it convinced me to train harder and um, fortunately I was blessed to be all district the second year in a row all region and then get into state and currently my senior season I currently hold a 1722 personal record and outdoor track I do the mile two mile and I currently hold the uh, school record in the uh, 3200 with uh, an 1126. So, yeah. well, is it true that you have a nickname? And, yes. And your nickname is the Rocket. The Rocket. <laughs> okay. So I think the Rocket is really fitting for you, especially if you're running all the time, right? You know, right? yep. Uh, running a lot. But tell me about what's a typical day like in Caleb's life in, in Wise County Schools. Well, <laughs> usually it's. Not a lot of sleeping hours. I usually get up at, uh, you know, 6 in the morning, go to the track, run anywhere from 3 to 4 miles. Then I get ready, come to Eastside, see all the all the fun people I know. And, um, yeah, and then after school I got practice, which is another 3 to 4 miles. So usually my uh, training resume is about 45 miles a week. So. Wow. And then after practice, I usually go to whatever close sporting event is around the area, whether it be volleyball, football, basketball, baseball, softball. Just really all depends on what season we're in, how close the games are. So, well, you're yeah. pretty active, and you know you're pretty active in your school, but you're also um, active throughout the region because a lot of kids from other schools know about you know know who the Rocket is, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you're you're. Uh, a very school spirited person, but you're also very personable, and, and everybody seems to know who you are. Um, but outside of sports and all this extracurriculars, what's your favorite subject? What subject do you enjoy the most in school? It probably it have to be probably the writing because uh, because uh, earlier and this kind of ties in with that extracurricular stuff uh, because um, the during basketball sophomore year. Um, I was uh, nominated, and uh, Kelly Pearson uh, recruited me to be a sports writing intern for the uh, Coalfield, and um, I've been able to write some stories about basketball, baseball, softball, so that has to be, writing has to be my favorite uh, subject, and sports writing is probably what I'm going to pursue in the, uh, in the future. Okay, that's great. Um, you know, some of the questions that I have, you've kind of already answered. Um, but the questions I want to know is, you know, I'm a lot older than you. You know that we, we talked about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. But what's something you wish adults understood better now about being a student? OK, you know. I went to school back in the 1900s. You remember, you know, what the 1900s on? You know? <laughs> Not uh, really. Yeah, ex exactly. So, you know, it was a long time ago. Things have changed. But what what is something you wish adults understood about being a student today? Gosh, that's a tough one. I mean, it's like most of the most of the schools nowadays. It's like there's a lot of unfortunate stuff. But 
I'm one of those guys that try to bring in like the positivity. Like sometimes kids don't want to come to school because they're getting bullied and all that. But mm -hmm. um, it's like, like what does that really accomplish? Like, yeah. like I just try to. I'm trying to be one of those motivational, uplifting students that make the kids want to come to school and be, you know, not all completely negative. Right. Well, you're, so you're a glass half full kind of guy. You're very positive. And I think, and, and Caleb, I talk to a lot of folks that, you know, that I've either gone to school with or folks in my office or even our principals. I think kids are nicer to each other in some ways these days because you know so many more people from so many different schools. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that having people like you in the schools that are positive and good influences and people seeing, you know, you work hard, right? You said mm -hmm. you get up early in the morning. Uh, you're writing for the newspaper. You're supporting other, you know, other members of your community. Um, but I think it's good to have folks like you that are uplifting. Um, you talked about some of the recent uh you know, things that, that have gone on on social media. You know, social media, there's always... Yes. Uh, there's always crazy things. Uh-huh. Right? That, that that corrupts a lot of people's minds, and it's it's unfortunate that that social media has corrupted the mind in a way that now it's inflicting the personal side of it, and therefore that, of course, carried on with, like, the governor's cell phone-free policy yeah. coming up in January. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that a little bit, but do you think, and some of this stuff on social media and all that all that jazz, um, people don't verify information anymore. How do you know, how do you know, you know, you're a senior in high school, you hear things, how, how do you know or verify that the information that you hear is real? Yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's like, usually, usually you don't. Usually you just kind of hear things and... Most people go on and just say, oh, this is all fake and stuff, but I'm one of those more, uh, you know, concerned people, so yeah. it's... Well, let me ask you this question. When you come in the building at, at Eastside, how many resource officers do you have? Uh, I think we have usually about one or two. Yep, usually one or two, definitely one, two mm -hmm. sometimes. So when you come in the building... You're, you're, we've got resource officers there from the sheriff's department. You've got two administrators there, you yep. know, um, that, that work in your school. But do you feel, you know, you feel safe at, at Eastside? I, I think so. Yeah. And again, it's kind of unfortunate that other people don't feel that way. But, yeah, I feel I feel pretty safe, especially because I have a, such a positive relationship with the administrators and the uh resource officers and the teachers up there. Okay, that's great. All right, now, we've talked a little bit about school safety. We've talked about you running. We've talked about you riding. I, I want to ask you this question, okay? You're, you're a senior in high school. You, you told me you're, you're a fairly young senior, but how do you handle studying? I mean, you talked about not getting much sleep. You talked about getting up early. You're very active. How, how do you study? Yeah, that's, that's tough. Usually... Because with all the practicing and the extracurricular stuff, sometimes it's hard. Like usually, if I if I have to, I usually do it just after said extracurricular activity. But usually, I want to keep that in school as much as possible. Yeah. That's pretty much the key. And I would say our teachers do a pretty good job of trying to, you know, not to put too much on you, but you know, they have mm -hmm. high expectations yes. of you, yes. right? But they're not trying to, you know, put too much on mm -hmm. to you. That that's what that's what they do. It's because the teachers know. It's not just me, but anybody else that does sports, they know that there's a lot of weight on their shoulders with practice and games and all that. So okay. Um, let me answer this, and this is a tough question, okay, because I've had a few over my, my lifetime that have meant a lot to me, but is there a particular teacher or, or mentor that has made, like, a, a really significant impact on you? Oh, my goodness. So you were and not – You, you, you can have joking. more than one, okay, <laughs> but, you know, what is – do you have one at least that's made a significant impact? Man, <laughs> I have a lot. I'd say definitely more than one. I I'd say just about all of them because, you know, I think – Every single one of them have made an impact on me in some way that has impacted my future. Yeah. So, like, all of my teachers from pre-K all the way up to senior year, I think, have made some sort of impact on me in a very positive way. Well, and that kind of... 
I don't know if you know this or not, Caleb, but we've had a very good history of making, you know, we have, we do well on, oh, on oh, yes. tests, okay? Mm-hmm. And I've always told people that the reason we do so well is because we have really good teachers, mm-hmm. okay? And we have teachers that care about our students, and they really push you, and they don't they don't forget about you, do they? You know, I'd say some of those kindergarten teachers are still... Uh, oh, they, they still remember. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, and that's what I, I usually, sometimes I even go down back to the primary and middle schools just for a little nostalgia trip if I have time okay well, I'm, a, I'm a nostalgic fella too you, are you yeah okay all right do you know do you know much history I mean yeah, are, there any, <laughs> are there any things I can uh you know that, that inter- interest you as far as history goes or things that you're interested there mm, not really oh, okay. I just I just know most of the consolidations that have come in I mean Coburn St. Paul Powell Valley, Appalachia, J.J. Kelly, Pound. So You've done your homework. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know your Wise County history, I think, just a little bit. Um, <laughs> let me ask you this, okay? We've talked about all the all the great things that you've done and, 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 you know, how hard you work. But, you know, sometimes people make mistakes, right? Mm-hmm. So talk, you don't have to have, be specific, but talk about a time that maybe you made a mistake and you were like, you know what, I shouldn't have done that. And I really learned from it. Yeah, there there have been times that both personally, both also in the in the sports world where I've it's like that that one missed uh, that one missed practice or that one missed uh, workout can really hurt you. And it it did in that regional uh, cross country meet sophomore year. I feel like if I had done just a little bit more, I was only thirty seconds off of going to state and. Um, that obviously I learned and I worked harder the following year and I got a state uh, appearance. That's awesome. And that's a great experience, isn't it? Well, typically when you guys go to state, where do you guys run? Uh, we go to Salem. Okay. Uh, I think they changed it. They changed it this year. We're going to Blacksburg, Virginia Tech. So, Gotcha. Yeah, it's usually up to say, the Salem area. Uh-huh. What they've had. They used to have it more toward Washington, D.C., but that's changed the past few years. Mm-hmm. All right. Now we're going to talk about a little bit about change okay uh, I feel like we have a great school system I feel like we have great teachers oh, great yes. administrators but let's just talk about let's talk about the world all right let's talk about the world and let's talk about if you had the power to make one change in the world what what would it be man that's tough but you know and it's like I know we've mostly recovered from the covid-19 pandemic but there are some that are still uh recovering from it and um i don't know um part of me thinks that now funny thing this actually comes from our english class uh we're currently writing a uh research paper on uh why we think uh colleges should be tuition free or not okay, so cool. yeah. i think while i don't think they should necessarily be free for everybody i think they should at least be lowered especially with the with the debt burden and with again with all these kids recovering from a pandemic, so yeah, that's one that's one big change I'd well, possibly like to see. I agree, and I think it's important that you know kids need to, if they're going to go to college, they need to be selective in where they go because you know are you going into a career that you're definitely going to be able to support your family mm, with exactly. And, and, uh, you know, and education is very, very expensive. Yep, it motiv- it, it'll motivate them if they if their families could afford it. Correct. Yeah, very, very much so. Um, let me ask you. We've talked a little bit about community, and we've talked about your involvement, but your all's community is is very special. I believe. I think you guys really support each other. Mm-hmm. W- what role do you think just students in general have in shaping the communities that, that they live in? Like, yeah, like I think. Like when, especially when it comes to our sports teams, we support each other like brothers and sisters. Um, we pack the houses every game, and it's like even students who don't play the same sport, they uh, still come out and support their uh, classmates. We have we're very we're very tight in terms of uh, supporting one another and supporting the community. Because heck, when this past year, when Eastside and Central both made it to the state championship last year. Uh, both of their communities banded together and supported yeah. one another. So we have a very special community in terms of support. I know East Side and Central are big rivals when they play each other, but when they're together playing for 
state championships in their respective classifications, uh, they do a fantastic job at that. Okay. Yeah, I agree. And that was a great day. I mean, it was a great day that uh, you, you spoke of last year during basketball. It was a great day. Um, now I'm going to ask you some fun and maybe creative questions, if that's okay. Because mm-hmm. I do want to get to know you. But I, I've seen you so much at ball games, and, you know, I – I see you around, and obviously your principal thinks a lot of you to send you up here and, and meet with me. But um, if you could have lunch, all right, you like you like lunch, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you could have lunch with any historical figure or celebrity, <laughs> who would it be and why? Oh, that's a toughie. <laughs> yeah, man, I might. I don't know. I, I, and I know this might be giving away my little. If I were to vote, I. Probably say Donald Trump. <laughs> okay, so you would you would go with, with uh, you know former President Mr. Trump, but he's also a candidate this year. Uh-huh. Right? Okay, all right. And then I'm gonna ask you one more fun, creative question, and then I'll give you a chance to ask me some, and then I've got one more little segment to do with you. All okay, right. um, if you had one superpower, okay, what would it be, and how would you use it? Oof, that's a toughie, but. Man, I don't know. It's like technically, I would say, I would say super speed, but I technically well, already, I, mean, already fast, I technically you know? already have that. Yeah, so, I don't know. It's, it's kind of tough, but I mean, I just would like to be like sort of an overseer of everything in this uh, world. Try to be a protector, you know, because okay. I already do that for my community and my school. So to do it for other communities, other regions around, uh, just be special. That's good. Now that's actually a really, really good uh, answer, Caleb. Okay, that's a really good answer. Got one more. I, I, I want to leave it off my list. We can, we can, uh, we can add it in there. What's the scariest animal? <laughs> yeah, I, it's okay. I don't know if I really have one. You know, I, it's like. I'd run so fast that probably I probably wouldn't even have to worry about that. <laughs> okay, so you're not afraid of any animals. Okay, nope. I got you. All right. Well, I'm going to pause my questions, but I think that you have some questions for me. And I told you, mm-hmm. you know, I told Caleb before he came uh, to meet with me, I said come up with four or five questions that, that you know, he wanted to know. And I said, I told you you could be about anything anything yep. in the world, okay? So I'm not prepared. I, just like you, <laughs> I didn't give you these questions before. Uh, all right. So we'll see We'll see what Caleb came up with here. All right. Well, um, so have you had any, uh, like, prior job experience before stepping into the uh, superintendent position that you're in today? Yeah. Um, you know, Caleb, I'm a lot like you because I grew up in, you know, Southwest Virginia and I went to Wise County Schools, but I started out teaching. I started out coaching. Uh, went from teaching and coaching, drove a bus a little bit, mm-hmm. been, a, been a bus driver before. Um, then I became an assistant principal, principal, and I've just kind of kept my nose down and kept working, and uh, um, here I am. Nice. How many years did it take you? To, to get to here? Yeah. 20 years. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it took, it took 20 years uh, to, to, to get the current role that I have. All right, but now uh, your thoughts of uh, when you stepped into the uh, superintendent role managing all the schools in this area from the primary to the middle to the high schools and uh, – what are your What were your thoughts? Were you like nervous at all? Were you excited? Were you? Yeah. Well, anytime you take a, a step and you take on a new role, you're always excited. You're always nervous, but you try to just lean on the people that you have. We have great people. I've got great principals. We've got great assistant principals, and, and I have a great uh, leadership team here in my central office. Oh so yes. When when I made that transition to become superintendent, uh, I had the confidence because I'm surrounded by great people. All right. Um. Now, I, I got to ask, uh, we might have already mentioned this, but the pros and cons of doing this and doing your uh, superintendent role, like, and this will also tie into another question, like, what's the what's a day in the life of Dr. Mike Goforth? No, that's a good, that's, a, that's, that's two questions, I guess, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, I tell people this, okay, uh, Caleb, you ever have that feeling of having homework the next day? You, you know that, that, <laughs> that dreaded feeling of having homework? Or uh, you've got a, a paper due the next yep. day. That's my job about every day mm-hmm. because I gotta stay on my toes. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to stay informed of, of what's going on in our, in our school. Um, but you know, it's it's a tremendous responsibility to uh, make sure everything runs smoothly. And, and at the end of the day, we're very we're very fortunate to have good people. I mean, we really are. 
and uh, you know from our bus drivers mm-hmm. to our cafeteria workers we, we really do so I'm very fortunate um, it is a tremendous responsibility but we have good people to help me out yeah I'm I'm glad and that's like just like just like uh, I said I've I'm blessed to have good teachers good resource officers good administrators and good students so uh, yeah um, and I think back the day in the lot, my, my day could vary. It depends, mm-hmm. you know, it depends, you know, today I, I'm fortunate. I get to spend some time with you. I'm, you know, marked it off in my calendar to make sure that I do that. I spend time. We have several committees that we have. We have a parent advisory committee. Yep. I meet with them at least once every other month of, um, you know, two parents from every school comes in and we talk about things that are going to school. I have a teacher committee where teachers come and meet with me and talk. Um, I have a, another um, student leadership council that I, we sit and talk about different, various things. But my day to day is usually a bit filled with meetings or visiting schools, mm-hmm. and that's my favorite part. That's what I miss probably more than anything, Caleb, yep. is getting to be around guys like you and, and kids and, and students. So you probably see me around a little bit. Oh yes. <laughs> now this one, this is a question for all of the, this is the this is one of the last ones I have. This is a question for all of the OGs out there. Um, <laughs> Now, this guy was, he mentioned being a coach, yeah. and he was uh, fortunate enough to be coach for a certain state runner-up and state championship team. Ain't yeah. that right? Yeah, but just, you know, just like you, you know, a coach is only good as their players, right? Mm-hmm. So yep. I, I was very fortunate to have some really good players uh, during my time coaching. Uh, some of the best experiences in my life, and honestly, um, still to this day, some of the best relationships I've ever had are some of the kids that I've coached, and uh, I still keep up with them to this mm-hmm. day. I'm a big sports person, but uh, I keep up with everything Wise County. You know, I love Mr. Burt. Mr. Burt's been on a dominant run here, 10 consecutive oh, yes. uh, state championships down at, down at Eastside. Uh-huh. Uh, but I want to see everybody do well, and, and I tell people this too, Caleb, and you can tell me if I'm mm-hmm. wrong. People in Wise County are pretty competitive, don't you think? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, Definitely. Yeah. No matter if it's a cross-country race or a one-act play, we're trying mm-hmm. to win, aren't we? Uh-huh. <laughs> Me and them central runners can get pretty competitive at times. <laughs> That's good. Uh, fun fact, never ran cross-country, Caleb. <laughs> All right. Never did. But I did. But I did coach it. I coached it two years. Nice. It was good. Uh, but I did run track. Mm-hmm. What did you run? Run the 400, the 4x1, four and the 4x4. Four four. More, more of a sprinting kind of? guy i guess i mid, guess mid. Not, not fast enough for the for the sprints but tall enough to have long enough legs to get me around the track fast that that's 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 a good uh, that's a good benefit right there yeah so well i thank you for your questions um i have a few trick ones for you all right all right and if you don't know these okay <laughs> Just feel free to just answer the best you can. I'm not going to ask every one, but this will be kind of how we end. Okay? Right. Are you Are you ready? Oh, you yes. Take a deep breath or anything. <laughs> All right. I'm going to ask you questions. I want you to tell me to the best of your ability what you think they are. Uh huh. And if you've ever done this before, you you can stop me. Okay. Um, these are things that that I grew up with, or folks that they probably teach you grew up with. Um, that maybe no longer exist. Okay. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you this question, Caleb. What do you think is a Rolodex? Oh my God! <laughs> mm, that's that's a toughie. Can you tell me what subject does it come from? Can't do it. I'm, I'm, this is this is all on you, buddy. No Google, Lordy. no Siri, <laughs> no AI to help you out of this. But if you could tell me what 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 is a Rolodex? I uh, golly. <laughs> You're right about that not not really being existent anymore. <laughs> Correct. All right. So we're we're, we're you, you, no guesses on that. No. Okay. All right. What about this one? I feel like this is maybe one that you can get. Okay. Maybe. What is a Walkman? Man, it walks. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> a man. A walk, do you know what a Walkman? A Walkman used to be what we listened to music on. Did you know that? Interesting. Uh, you know what a CD is? Oh. Yeah, we, mm. a CD went into the wall. Clever. B- before cell phones. You know how you Clever. Got, yeah. yeah. Very right. clever. I got, I'm going to ask you two more, okay? All right. Uh, this is something. Do you ever play video games? Oh, yes. You play video um, games? Halo, uh, Roblox, Fall Guys. I do a, lo- a lot of that cool stuff. Among Us. Okay. Let, let, what What is the Oregon Trail? Do you know what the Oregon Trail is, Caleb? I've heard of it, but I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> okay. 
It was a former computer game. When I was in middle school, we used to play Oregon Trail all the time, and everybody really liked to play Oregon Trail. Must be one of them popular games back in, like, the 90s. Maybe. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I don't know about popular, but everybody played it, I believe. So, All right, I'm going to ask you one more question, okay? All right. Can you name one of the Spice Girls? Uh, no. <laughs> no. I, I'm not about that Spice Girl life. <laughs> no? no? What kind of music do you listen to? Or do I, but you know, when I come to Eastside, there's a lot of 80s music played, right? Yes, that do is true. Do you choose that, or is that cho- chosen by administration? Um, I, I, that probably is chosen by admin, but I'm not 100% sure. Are you, are you into the 80s music? Mm-hmm. On occasion, yes. <laughs> so what? right now, what was, you know, on your drive up here to come interview with me, what, what was the song, what was playing? I, well, I just like, I, it, can, it can vary yeah. on any given day. It's like whenever I have a good run, I always like the happy music. Whenever I have a bad run, I like motivating mm-hmm. sort of music. So, what's motivating music? Like, Remember, I'm 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 a lot older than you. Kevin, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that, again, it can vary. Like there there are several different artists that I listen to. Uh, yeah. Also, kind of a rap guy, uh, yeah. Eminem, Migos, yeah. all those guys. Yeah. So. It can, it can just vary on any given day. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, and, and I think that's important, and I think it's good to have – I am I have a very uh, eclectic style of music. I listen to all kinds of stuff. Uh, my daughter likes listening to Morgan Wallen. And <laughs> that, 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 that is true. That is true. A lot, of, a lot of the girls in school like to listen to Morgan Wallen. And Taylor Swift. Um, don't get me started with her. <laughs> well, we won't. That, right. That's 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 pretty much the Chiefs in a nutshell. That's the okay. NFL script right there. Chiefs are winning the Super Bowl. <laughs> okay. Well, um, let me answer this, Caleb. Big sports guy. Spartans got a pretty good football team this year, don't they? Oh yes. Okay. What we think in regular season? We thinking that I think they could. They might go ten and zero, nine and one, maybe. I don't know, but. If they can, they play Chilhawi this week, which will be their toughest game uh, so far. I think they can win, but I think their toughest game the entire season will be Rye Cove. Oh, yeah. And if they beat them, they're going uh, ten and zero, I think, in the regular season. And I don't. And this is uh, a little fun fact for all you sports guys: uh, they have not gone past the first round of the playoffs since I think when they first opened. Okay. So they they came close a couple times. They were close last year. They almost. Beat Ry Cove, so I think they get past the first round of the playoffs uh, this year. They might even get as far as uh, state quarters, state semis. So. so you would say high expectations, right? Yep, high expectations. That, That's always good because uh, you know they've really kind of turned that that program around. Yeah, we have a determined group of upperclassmen. I can tell you that much. If you ask any one of them, and even our underclassmen are very motivated. Uh, if you ask any one of them, they've been working on and off all over the summer like I like I have for cross country. So awesome. they have just as good of a work ethic as I do. Awesome. Well, Caleb, you know, that's all I have for you for today, and I appreciate you for coming. I think that you're going to be the best, you know, this is a good start. You know, you're, mm-hmm. you're the very first guest that we have on the Pulse here uh, in my office, and I'm going to be keeping up with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I wish you the best. I hope you run fast. Uh I probably will never be able to catch you, mm-hmm. all right? but, <laughs> but you know, I'll be keeping up with you. And I thank you so much for taking time to come up here and meet with me and talk. And uh, I think this is a, a very good start, and you were a very good first uh, yes. first person to interview. Thank you. Hey, maybe in a 400 you could catch me. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Never know. Not now. But well, thank you very much, Caitlin. No problem. Thank you for joining us uh, for The Pulse. Um, We will try to do this at least once a month. We uh, are are going to start this tradition of interviewing one student from from every school. And I I really hope that this will give you some insight in what's going on with our students here in Wise County. Um, And, you know, give us a thumbs up if you like it. Give me a call if you don't. And uh, make sure that uh, everybody has a great school year.